My name is Noah Millington, and my performance is turning two worlds towards a faster future with the laying of the 1858 Transatlantic Telegraph Cable. You thought that communication was slow during the dial-up era. Do I have a story for you? I'll start from the beginning of my research. You be the curious student, and I'll be the stories you found. Hello, NHD scholar. I am Google. What are you looking for today? Well, you're interested in communications, technology, satellites, and the internet, but you don't want to talk about satellites in space. You want to talk about something that is not very well known. Well, based on your criteria, I believe I have just the information you need. Would you like to try my new experimental feature where I can become the person you want to learn more about? All right. Compiling personality files and historical data for Cyrus West Field, 1820. I am Cyrus West Field, a wealthy businessman and world traveler with many connections with powerful people in both the American and British governments. America is experiencing rapid growth and social turmoils, but green inventors are creating new ways to communicate. Samuel Morse is one of these. Samuel Morse, you may recognize as Morse code, invented the telegraph and a very early version was funded by the United States government about 15 years ago. However, a lack of vision on how it could be used meant that it was discarded. The world was entering into a time of invention, and the need for quick communication was significant. Used to waiting months for news or letters to travel by ship across the Atlantic, and with Europe being the epicenter of financial markets, I saw the potential to connect the old world with the new by using a version of Samuel Morse's telegraph. An endeavor like this would take more time, money, and resources than we can manage on our own. I set about connecting the fledgling United States government, seen as an underfunded backwater country at the time, with the wealthy and powerful British Empire. Their educated aristocracy considered it sporting to invest in risky maritime ventures, and as a global empire had incentive to connect its far flung colonies and territories. We did so much back because we, in this time where our carriages were pulled by horses, our ships were made of wood and had sails, and the American Civil War hadn't happened yet. We were going to lay a telegraph cable across the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. We were going to create a turning point in history. I convinced both governments to provide ships, money, crews, materials, and technology to manufacture and lay this cable between Ireland and Newfoundland. The Americans provided the largest warship in the United States Navy, but also the largest warship in the world, the USS Niagara. The British provided the HMS Agamemnon and a fleet of smaller vessels to help lay the cable. The project caught the world's imaginations. Naysayers predicted failure, but our sent off was filled with parades and parties. However, our first attempt did fail. The paying out machinery caused the cable to snap, and it fell to an ocean depth that we had no ability to retrieve. 400 miles of cable were lost. We needed to rethink the cable, the paying out machinery, and the strategies used next time. More money was raised, a similar fleet of ships were provided, new cable and paying out machinery were invented, and a mid-Atlantic meeting point was selected. Meeting in the mid-Atlantic between Ireland and Newfoundland on July 29, 1858, we spliced our cable ends together and set off towards our respective continents. On August 5th, I landed in Newf Newfoundland and sent a message. The cable is laid. The world awoke to the news of our success. This turning point in history had this turning point in communications had proved to be impossible possible. Queen Victoria sent a congratulatory message to President Buchanan over the cable once it was fully functional. The Queen decides to congratulate the President upon the successful completion of this great international work in which the Queen has taken the deepest interest. The Queen is convinced that the President will join with her in fervently hoping that the electric cable would prove an additional link between the nations, whose friendship is founded upon their common interest and reciprocal esteem. The Queen has much pleasure in thus communicating with the President and renewing to him her hopes for the prosperity of the United States. President Buchanan returned a similar congratulatory message. On the success of the international enterprise accomplished by the science, skill, and indomitable energy of the two countries is a triumph more glorious, because far more useful to mankind than it was ever won by conquerors on the field of battle. Will not all nations of Christendom spontaneously unite in the declaration that it shall be forever neutral, even in the midst of hostilities? The world celebrated our achievement. Newspapers praised our efforts, cans were fired, parties broke out, and speeches filled the air. 
One of the great orators, Reverend Henry Ward Beecher, captured the essence of what this turning point in history meant to the people of the world. That which is spoken at 12 o'clock in London will be known to us at 8 o'clock in the morning according to our time. It is no longer in her own bosom that France can keep her secrets. It is no longer in her own race that Russia can keep her thoughts and plans. In less than an hour, whenever this system shall be completed, the world will be enlightened quicker than by the sun, quicker than by a meteor slash. That which is known in one place will be known in all places. The world will have but one ear, and that ear will be everywhere. However, even with all of the excitement and hope for the future, there were still some who didn't think that the cable was worth anything. I remember reading in the newspaper that someone thought that cable brought by the by the cable was, quote, superficial, sudden, unsifted, too fast for the truth, end quote. They would go on to be proven wrong, because by the turn of the century, the world did indeed have an ear everywhere. Businesses and governments rushed to lay cables, both for financial and communication purposes. In just over a decade after these cables were laid, their unexpe unexpected and incalculable value was discovered during World War I when the Allies used them to coordinate military campaigns and used wiretapping to listen in to German communications. This turning point in history cannot be overstated. See, I told you, it's an amazing turning point that has been lost to history. Also unknown to most people, you are using underwater cables right now, as most of me is being transmitted under the oceans. Any she scholar, would you like to know more? We give satellites most of the credit for handling the internet in our modern era, but they only handle about 30% of internet traffic. The rest is carried by over 750,000 miles of underwater fiber optic cables, some along the same routes as Cyrus Field's cable. We have been laying these cables since 1987, initially for telephone calls. Since then, they have evolved to carry much more internet traffic, including live streaming services, video calls, much and much higher data transmission capabilities. On average, these cables transmit 1.7 trillion times faster than the original 1858 cable. None of these turning points of communications would have been possible without that cable. Turning points may not always look very impressive. Well, a turning point may look like the transcontinental railroad being completed, or the space shuttle blasting off out of our atmosphere. They aren't always as obvious or easy, or easy to see. Would you like to see what the first transatlantic telegraph cable looked like back in 1858? Here, let me zoom to this zoom into this turning point right here. This cable was originally wrapped in galvanized iron wire, food of percha, and tar to protect it from the conditions at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, and when fully wrapped, was no wider or round than your thumb. Good idea, energy scholar. You should learn a little about Google too. Like the small, like the piece of wire you just saw, I began as a small, unimpressive creation. In 1996, my co-founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin, while they were pursuing a PhD at Stanford University, created my first storage device out of Lego bricks. This is my baby picture. At the time, four gigabyte hard drives were the largest available, so they stacked ten of them into this cabinet that they had built using Lego bricks and translucent plastic panels. Well, NHG Scholar, it has been a pleasure to help you. Good luck with your project. With the laying of the transatlantic, transatlantic cable, communications, communications technology, and global expectations for rapid discourse, ushered nations over 150 years ago into the foundations of our global economy. Events like the laying of Cyrus Field's cable and our modern connectors like underwater fiber optic cables are essentially parallel turning points in history, one building on the other.